Hello and welcome to Hollywood at Home from Arizona Public Media. I'm Victoria Lucas. Tonight's feature is a buddy movie, a crime caper, a love story, and a musical all combined into one classic screwball comedy. That's right, it's Some Like It Hot from 1959. Jack Lemmon and Tony Curtis star as a pair of struggling Chicago musicians who accidentally witness a gangland massacre during the height of prohibition. Barely escaping with their lives, they're spotted by the assassins who don't take kindly to witnesses. They need to get out of town fast and incognito. So, naturally, they do what any normal out-of-work musician on the run from the mob would do. They disguise themselves as women and join an all-girl band on a train headed to a gig in Florida. What could go wrong? Well, one of these handsome and healthy young men in disguise could meet and fall for the band's lead singer, played by the irrepressible and irresistible Marilyn Monroe, while the other young man in disguise could be fallen for by an eccentric and amorous millionaire played by Joe E. Brown. Sounds like fun, right? Sure fire hit. But even though director and co-writer Billy Wilder had made piles of money for Hollywood studios during the past 15 years, Some Like It Hot was a tough sell for financing. His friend, producer David O. Selznick, was horrified by the idea. You can't start off a comedy with a brutal murder, he said. Blood and jokes do not mix. Only United Artists, a company founded 40 years earlier to allow actors and directors to control their own artistic interests, was willing to take a chance. Wilder's next big challenge was getting the look of the disguises right. Prior to filming, Jack Lemmon and Tony Curtis spent four days in the makeup, hair, and costume departments trying out various combinations and shooting camera tests. Lemon later commented, it had to be funny, but it also had to be believable. When Billy finally thought we'd gotten it right, Tony and I spotted a group of women from a different movie headed to the ladies' room. Naturally, we decided to follow them in to powder our noses. And when no one batted an eyelash, we knew the look was perfect. Tony Curtis said, Jack was outrageous as a girl. He couldn't wait to go tromping out. I was more reserved, more of a grand dame look, kind of a mix between Grace Kelly and my mother. Another challenge for Billy Wilder and his actors was working with Marilyn Monroe. Wilder liked to shoot long master shots of entire scenes, seldom cutting to close-ups, almost as if the audience were watching a stage play. But Monroe often required multiple takes to say even the simplest lines. This put tremendous pressure on Lemon and Curtis, who had to be perfect in every long take every time, because they never knew when Marilyn would get the words right. They only knew that that take would be the one used in the movie. Still, as Wilder later maintained, when you saw what she gave you, all was forgiven. It was gold. At the first screening for studio executives, David O. Selznick's dire prediction seemed to come true. When the lights came up, the suits just sat there. Luckily, someone suggested that they screen the film for the UCLA crowd in Westwood, which they did, and it was a triumph. The audience never stopped laughing, and at the end, they stood up and cheered. So now please sit back and enjoy this enduring comedy classic whose first theatrical release was banned in Kansas. From 1959, it's Some Like It Hot. <laughs> 